What kind of person makes a great book coach? At Author Accelerator, we've certified more than 100 book coaches, so we have a pretty good idea of the kind of person that takes to this work and does well at it. We've developed a list of 10 characteristics that we typically see in book coaches, and I'm gonna go through those now so you can think about those. And when I'm finished, there's a quiz so you can rate yourself on each of these characteristics and see how you measure up. So thing one is people who are good at book coaching love books. That may seem really obvious, but it's what we do. We're helping bring books into the world. We're reading books all the time. We're studying books, we're analyzing them, we're, we're just neck deep in them and you want to love that. You want to be somebody who loves to read and who loves books and who loves bookstores and who's always the person that's talking about books or thinking about books. Maybe you were that kid that read books under your covers with a flashlight after lights out, or maybe you're that person now who always has a book to read. That's, that's the prerequisite, must love books. I'm gonna assume that that is you or you wouldn't be listening to this. The second characteristic of a good book coach is that they love writers. So writers are a unique and special kind of person. They are drawn to share their work, to raise their voice and to try to get it out in the world. And there is no easy answer for how to do that. It's hard work. Writing is hard, emotional work. It is, there's a lot of skills that you have to master. It's a long-term project. There's so much going on in the writing of a book. And, and writers are the type of people that are willing to go through that. And they often bring huge passion to their work and they often bring huge doubt to their work because there is no answer. They're doing all this work and they're putting all this energy and effort in and they don't know how it's going to end up. There is, there's no guarantee for this work. And so writers are who we work with. And if you are the kind of person that likes that kind of person, you're probably going to do well at book coaching. If being around that kind of person and interacting with that kind of person makes you crazy, this is probably not going to be for you. So must love books, must love writers. The third characteristic of a great book coach is that they feel comfortable with the creative process. So the creative process is inherently chaotic. It is not linear. It doesn't just go neatly from A to B, which ironically is what a book does. The experience of reading a book is very linear. You go from page one to the end, but the experience of writing a book is not like that. It's iterative, it's circular, it goes around and around and around, up and down, sometimes repeating itself. Sometimes, you know, you write a hundred pages, you throw them out. You're, there's ups, there's downs, it's, it's a little chaotic. And a book coach is there to manage that chaotic process and to bring some calm to it. We teach systems and processes at Author Accelerator that tame the creative process and that make it more manageable. We look for patterns in the creative process and we help writers move through it. But that being said, you're in a creative process. You're in that chaotic world and you have to be able to work within that and manage a project within that and be okay with that chaos. And if you can do that, odds are good that you're going to be a great book coach. The fourth characteristic of a great book coach is that they feel comfortable managing a complex project. We often forget that a book is a very complex intellectual project that unfurls over time. There's so many pieces to it. There's so many skills that have to be mastered in it. it. There's just so much going on and writers get overwhelmed because there's so much going on and they don't often think of it as a long-term complex project. But if, if a book coach can bring that kind of project management thinking to the process, they're gonna bring huge value to their writers. To be able to see the end goal and to set the milestones that should be hit along the way and to help the writer hit those milestones and to hold them accountable for it and to do it all within the framework of budgeted time and money. This is an enormously important skill and the best book coaches absolutely bring this project management mindset to the work. So if you're the kind of person that 
likes to do that sort of thing, likes to keep the trains rolling and the, and the trains on time and the trains on the right track, you're probably gonna be good at book coaching. The fifth characteristic of a great book coach is that they have the ability to focus on both small details and the big picture at the same time. This is a really important thing to think about. Editors work on a word by word and a line by line level. They're, they're down in the, the wordiness of the work, but book coaches need to also do that and lift their eyes off the page. I often say you have to lift your eyes off the page and look at the horizon. And the horizon is what's happening in the marketplace. What other books are being written? What are the trends? What's happening in this industry? What is happening with this writer in a bigger, in a bigger picture than just what's on the page? It's combining both ways of thinking. It's bringing those multiple perspectives to the work. This too adds enormous value to a writer because it's really difficult for a writer to have both those perspectives all at the same time. They're usually so in the, the words, they're usually so on the page and so in the details of their idea that they have a hard time looking up and looking around. And a book coach can help them do that at really critical crossroads in the project and, and to bring that bigger, perspective to the work. And I think that that always helps make for a better book. So book coaches have that, that ability to think in two different um, realms at the same time. The sixth characteristic of a great book coach is they understand the marketplace. Now, this is a skill that is absolutely one that can be taught. If it's something that you don't have, it is not a deal breaker. But a book coach brings this to the writer, this understanding of what is happening in their particular category or genre right now. How are books being bought and sold? What are readers demanding? What are agents demanding? What are publishers demanding? What are publishers paying? All the ups and downs and changes of the publishing industry. It's an incredibly dynamic industry where things are just changing all the time. And even among the book coaching community, we are constantly struggling to keep up with what's happening. You know, there's a new publisher that sprung up and does everybody think that they're great or is everybody saying, ooh, they might be a bad apple? You know, that kind of thing that's coming up all the time or news is breaking and we're struggling and scrambling to, to keep up and to understand and to be able to help all right, our writers. And Bringing that kind of marketplace perspective to the writers is again, a really valuable thing that we do for them. It's hard for any one person, any one writer to keep tabs on all the things that are going on while still producing the work, while still doing their writing. But to have a collaborative partner that they can talk through these changes with and talk through what's going on and what does that mean to what I'm doing what the, and what does that mean to my work, this again is just such a, a valuable thing that, that a book coach can bring to the table. So that marketplace awareness is a, a characteristic that we see in the best book coaches. The seventh characteristic of a great book coach is they like to teach and they like to teach one-on-one. -on -one. Book coaches work one-on-one -on -one in very close, intimate relationships with writers. If you're the kind of person that likes to work that way, you're probably gonna be great at this work. Somebody who rather works in um, teams or likes to be in group settings or is, is better in that kind of an environment, you could still book coach, but you probably wanna think about running workshops or running group coaching situations or that sort of thing. But the traditional type of book coaching is one coach with one writer helping them with their work one-on-one. -on -one. That's what the work is. And so it's both the teaching and it's the one-on-one -on -one piece that uh, a, good book a good book coach is going to like and, and thrive in. Um, and most of our book coaches love that part of the work. They love to work one-on-one -on -one and they love to really get to know their clients and be in it with them and uh, walk side by side with them while they're doing their work. The 
eighth characteristic of a great book coach is that they're self-motivated. So we work by ourselves. We are individuals who work for ourselves. We're the boss. We set the schedule. We set the prices. We set the packages. We do all of that our own selves. So we get the freedom and fun of doing that, but we also have a responsibility and that means we have to be self-motivated. So self-motivated to do the work that we need to do, to hit our deadlines, to manage our business, to do all of those things has to come from you because it's not coming from anybody else. So being the kind of person who doesn't have to be prodded or pushed or told what to do if, if you're that kind of self-motivated person, then you're probably going to do well at book coaching. The ninth characteristic of a great book coach is that they have the ability to step back from the emotion of the project that they're working on and the person that they're working with. So this is just a critically important piece. A book coach has to set boundaries, both so that you don't work all the time, but also so that you protect yourself. We're often working with very intense emotions, not just the passion of the writer and the desire of the writer to do well, but many times the topics that we're working on are very emotional. They can be very intense topics that the, the writer's working on, whether they're doing memoir, nonfiction, or fiction. And you have to be willing to, to set boundaries so that you don't get sucked in, so that you don't get you know, overwhelmed by the emotions that, that you're dealing with. Imagine that you're editing a really intense scene with a really intense character and you're working on that all day long and then your family comes home and you know, you've been in this kind of dark or difficult or heavy place. How are you going to switch out of that? How are you going to not let that impact um, you know, the way that you are in the world. I mean, this is somewhat common sense and there's a lot of businesses and people who have to set those kind of boundaries, but I think sometimes people forget that book coaches are, are dealing with really intense topics. Now, sometimes you can set a boundary um, where you're not gonna work on a certain topic, where you're just not going to go there. In, in my book coaching um, experience, for example, I would never coach horror. Uh, I just can't do it. I get too scared. I'm kind of still scared of the dark. And if I'm working on a, a, a scary scene in a horror novel, it will freak me out and I won't sleep. So I just learned I can't, I can't do it. I also, have coached two different divorce books in my career, nonfiction divorce books, um, two different kinds of divorce books. And I was a child of divorce my own self. And at first I thought it was interesting and empowering to work on these books. But after the second one, I decided I can't do that anymore. I don't wanna do that anymore. It's too depressing. It's too hard for me. It's too, hard to set that boundary and step away. So you may learn that there's certain topics that you just won't go near or you won't touch or you don't want to deal with. And that is absolutely your right. And you have the power to, to do that. But still you need to be aware that the emotions of book coaching can be big and they can be uh, scary. And you know, you just need to be aware that that's part of what this work is. I think it's one of the reasons why the work is so satisfying is because you're doing very meaningful work. You're really doing work on the level of how do humans behave and what are good stories, of course, but in any good story, it's would, it, would this character or this person behave in this way or on the nonfiction side, what is the reader of this topic looking for? What do they need? What kind of pain are they in? How is that gonna help them get um, past their pain? And just asking these questions, dealing these, with these questions, being immersed in this, in this kind of work is, is big emotion. And just being aware that, that that's happening and being the kind of person that can manage that is important. The 10th characteristic of a great book coach is perhaps the most important, and that is that they are entrepreneurial. So when you're starting your own book coaching business, you are starting a business. You are being an entrepreneur. And a lot of people come to us from realms that they have no experience with business or entrepreneurship. They tend to be 
English majors or English teachers or MFA graduates or professors, or we have a lot of lawyers or people who come from different corporate departments like HR or communications, wherever it is that you're coming from probably is not an entrepreneurial place. And you need to understand that what you're doing is building a business. That means you're going to have to market your business. You're going to have to price your services and talk about money. You're need to, going to need to talk to your potential clients about money and about outcomes and about what you can promise and what you can't promise. You're going to need to be developing contracts and you're going to need to be developing systems and processes to run a more efficient business. You're going to have to be using technologies and learning new technologies and keeping up with your technologies all the time. If your business grows to a certain point, you may need to be managing a virtual assistant or maybe a team of other coaches or other partners that you have partnered with to, to do certain initiatives. All of these are business skills and entrepreneurial skills that can be learned and that we have seen so many book coaches step up and grow into, but you've got to know that it's coming. We're not going to hand you clients on a silver platter. Nobody's going to do that. We're not going to be able to tell you exactly what kind of business to run or what kind of writer to serve or exactly what kind of service to offer. That's got to come from you. And that's got to come from your thinking and trying and iterating. It's quite like the creative process for the writer in many, many ways where you are, you know, they're writing pages and seeing how they work and maybe throwing them out. You're trying a service or product or offering and seeing how it works and maybe throwing it out. It's quite parallel in many ways to the writing process. And it's one of the things that has been the most surprising and joyous outcomes of running Author Accelerator is seeing that the types of people who are drawn to book coaching actually are great entrepreneurs. They just didn't know that they would be. They were not ever told or taught that they could be. And once they realize that they have the skills or they can learn the skills, they can develop the skills that they need to be their own boss and run their own business, it's incredibly freeing and incredibly empowering for them to learn that. But you can't go into book coaching thinking you're not going to be able to deal with the entrepreneurial aspects because you're going to have to. That's just a reality of what it is. As I just said, I think it's a very exciting reality of what it is. And we at Author Accelerator have some tools and processes and systems to help you learn how to run a good business. And most importantly, we have a community of people who are also doing the same thing. And we're constantly helping each other and learning from each other and growing together to build strong businesses and to become good entrepreneurs. We would love to have you join our community if this list of characteristics feels like it is defining you or describing you. And the quiz that we have for you to take is just a fun way to think about these characteristics and test yourself and see how you come out. It's one thing to sit here and listen to me talk through them, but it's another to sit with yourself and to really honestly answer, how do I rank on these various aspects? Where are my weaknesses and what might I need to learn to become a great book coach? We hope that you are inspired to do so and that you are ready to listen to the next video, which is about the things that are not on this list of characteristics of a great book coach.